my name is uh, Abe Batchon. I'm the founder and CEO of BeStars.com. It's a online marketplace distribution uh, community of producers and artists. We have over 350,000 um, registered users currently, earning close to $5 million a year in sales. Um, we have some of the dopest music producers from all over the world licensing and selling their content um, on our platform. And this didn't happen overnight. This was a, a concept that I had back in, in the uh, 90s. I was one of the first artists to license a beat non-exclusively and actually sell beats non-exclusively back in the 90s on social music platforms back on... I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember places like dmusic.com or mp3.com back in the day when there was like a vibrant community of, of artists. Musicians always powered social media, right? I feel like, you know, if we didn't kickstart places like a MySpace or an mp3.com or, um, you know, a Facebook, I feel like musicians are always the driving energy force behind all engagement online. And so... Why I took, why I, um, here, just a little bit about me, um, why, why I left my job at um, a really, really big distributor called InGrooves, uh, which is now uh, one of Universal Music Group's um, strategic partners, and, and um, why I left my job there is because I've always had a history of connecting and building with music producers, and there's always been a constant need um, from them over the years expressing to me, Abe, we're stuck, uh, we're, st we're sick and tired of being taken advantage of in this current state of the music industry. We're sick, we're sick and tired of you know, not properly earning the royalty shares we deserve. Um, you know, we're sick and tired of being the behind the scenes guy. And we feel our music is capable of being at the forefront of anything, especially with how crappy lyrics are nowadays. The every, I mean, right now it's literally the beat featuring the lyrics. The beat, it's Metro Boomin featuring Future. Without the beat right now, in the current state of music, I don't think music will be anywhere. And so, it's the reason why we call the company Beat Stars, because we really, really, really want y'all to have that mentality of an artist, of a, someone that is a brand, someone that can sell their content, someone that can value their content and use it to widely distribute and earn a healthy living selling your music. So started out um, doing content development, um, representing labels and artists like Strange Music, uh, discovered Macklemore, uh, put together a hip hop group called Slaughterhouse. Over 300 labels and artists that we've worked with over the years and, and um, you know I just never really got the satisfaction of you know, working within that ecosystem. And, and early on, it was about 2005, right when kind of the disruption of digital music started to, you know, I, I always knew that at some point, you know, the CD is just going to die and iTunes is going to be the way of the future or platforms like iTunes. Um, so I, I gravitated towards companies that, you know, that had that in mind. It was just, you know, the internet was democratizing the way we consume music and it just made sense, right? It just... It just makes sense. But now with the emergence of streaming, um, the only winners right now are the big catalog owners, right? The big people, the big labels that have a ton of catalog that don't mind earning fractions upon fractions upon fractions of a penny while the songwriters and while the producers and the composers get jack shit, to be honest. So um, I quit back in 2000. 10 and said, I'm going, I'm going to do this full time. And so started out with a few well-known producers um, on an invite only basis, guys like Ill Mind um, and, and Focus, Grammy award winning producer, um, Havoc of Mob Deep. And I told these guys, I said, listen, I want to, I really want to disrupt this thing. You know, I really want to disrupt the way people collaborate. I really want to disrupt and create a whole new economy where music producers and beat makers can make a living outside of the traditional shady industry and not have to rely on an A&R to tell them when their stuff gets placed once a year or when their royalty check is going to come in. I wanted, I wanted to instill entrepreneurship. You know, that, that is the sole mission behind 
you know, what Beat Stars is and what we, we continue to, to strive to do. So I wanted to, because I, I mean, in institutions like this, um, you know, you kind of, um, the, the lines are not as clearly drawn um, between music producer and online beat seller and online beat maker. So I kind of want to just go through quickly some of the different roles that a music producer has in this industry right now, right? So the traditional music producer licenses traditionally production to one artist, right? They get in the studio or they connect via email somehow, some way, and they, they, they work with that one artist and they license that, that beat or that production to that one artist. Uh, they traditionally sell only exclusive licenses. So they'll sell one license to that recording artist or that, to that songwriter. Um, they'll license to TV and film and, and have, you know, and license their production non-exclusively for, for sync placements. They don't necessarily sell their music online, right? The traditional music producer. And traditionally, um, you know, they are brainwashed into, th into thinking that they are behind the scenes, you know, and I, I fucking hate that shit. I hate when people in the, in the industry itself just force this, this role on a content creator, on a, on a music producer. Dude, you're behind the scenes, man. You know, you're behind the scenes. Just chill behind the scenes. There is no money behind the scenes. And I'm going to explain to you why you need to step out of your comfort zone, why you need to act and operate like a small business and like an artist as your brand to make a living doing what we're doing. So traditionally behind the scenes and they have a limited audience, right? A limited audience and limited revenue streams. So when you're a traditional running, operating like a traditional music producer, um, there's one guy here I converted from being a traditional music producer into an online beat maker. And we'll, we'll want to talk to him a little later too. Um, Gabe from the Legion. And so, um, Limited, limited audience, meaning that there's only a handful of dudes really making it in the music industry. I mean, you really think about it. There's only, in, especially in hip hop, five, 10 guys max actually generating a decent revenue stream for their music. You know, there's no, but there's no room for, you know, for the other creators part of that process, unless you're kind of locked into some of the publishing situations that those guys are in or some of the label um, you know, in-house production and where you're kind of holding into this world where you can't operate like a small business. So some of the roadblocks that traditional music producers have are that their placements are far and few. I mean, dude, I mean, I don't want to name names, but Grammy award winning producers call me all the time and they say, Abe, how can I get a consistent revenue stream? Because I'm still waiting on the check that I did for Alicia Keys and I did for all these other big artists, right? They're, they're, they're at the mercy of a really, really shady business. And so they have a lot of uncertainty in how they can operate, how could they could forecast their careers, how could they could, how could they plan their finances, how could they take care of their families? You know, it's a very uncertain realm in music that for some reason, everyone expects the music producer to just take it and shut up, right? And I, and I refuse to you know, to even acknowledge that. So not saying that, not saying that, you know, striving and dreaming about landing a hit record or be, having a number one hit record is not a good thing. I think it's great. I think you should always want to strive to make amazing music that touches the world. But all I'm saying is take as much energy, take as, I mean, more energy than what you're doing on trying to accomplish those goals, you need to establish towards your own brand and your own business online, especially with the freedom of you know social media and, and YouTube and platforms like BeatStars. So placements are far and few. Royalty payments are lengthy in time. You don't know when you're gonna get your checks and most of the time they're not really the full amount. Constant uncertainty for longevity. For building, for building your brand, for building your your your, your base, um, very limited consumer base, right? So, and music industry budgets continued to decrease. I can name you about ten viral tracks that were purchased online by BeatStars producers that have become that become major hits on the internet, right? Or by the labels themselves, labels purchasing. I mean, everyone from 
that Panda track, everything from that F the Fetty Wap song, everything to the Dab On Em movement song, the Dab On. I mean, I can name countless, countless hit records that were sourced from the internet. And those days of a and ring and those, those days of like the major labels a and ring projects and, 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 and making sure that the, 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 the artist gets the right beat and they're sourcing the beat the very old traditional way is like gone because artists are on YouTube. They're on SoundCloud. They're on BeatStars. They're finding beats on the internet. It's quicker. It's more efficient. They ain't waiting for the A&R. They want to be able to sample a variety of sounds and find and discover their own producers to work with. And if you can hack your way into ranking on some of these platforms like YouTube and SoundCloud, all of those big artists are just going to automatically come to you. You don't even have to go hound them. And so another roadblock is that you're, so a lot of these guys are locked into long-term production deals. They're, they're locked into production deals where their content has no life other than waiting for someone on the label or that's, signed to that publishing company to write a song to it, right? And so you can't use that content to generate an income for yourself on the internet. So those are some of the roadblocks and there's still a lot of roadblocks as well for the online beat maker and then we're gonna talk about their roles and what they're doing online. So the online beat maker licenses the same production to more than one artist. Yeah, I know a lot of traditional music producers are like, no, man, I can't sell, I can't sell the same beat to a thousand different artists. What, what kind of shit is that for 25 bucks, right? Well, add it up, 25 bucks times a thousand. When you have an audience of millions upon millions of songwriters that are born on YouTube and on SoundCloud every single day, when your audience, does, does Amazon.com sell five iPads? And that's it, and, or one iPad, and then that's it. They just remove that product from their, from their platform. No, your beats are products. Whether you like it or not, it's a product in your store. You are an online business. And that's what I want you to ingrain in your brain and your everyday life. You are 90% businessman, businesswoman, and 10% beat maker. So they sell, the online beat maker sells both the non-exclusive and the exclusive license. And so the non-exclusive license, just to kind of clarify what that is, is basically just a, a lease. You're handing it over to an artist that potentially can make it big. You're, you still maintain all your rights. You still maintain all your publishing, your master rights, all the derivative rights. It's still your production. You're not selling it completely. You're not selling any rights to it. So you're just allowing, you're democratizing by allowing thousands or hundreds of people to have a shot at making a hit record with your beat. And hopefully someone takes off with it because you own it, right? So would you rather have one guy you sell a beat to for 500 bucks or $1,000, let that sit on the shelf at that label for, the, for lifetime and may never see the, the true potential of what that song could be or have your content be available just like any other digital product in the world and have it be available for everybody. So, which gives a much higher probability of your track becoming, you know, a popular song. So online beat makers sell production for uh, TV and film as well. They license online as well to, to, you know, TV and film companies and music supervisors, but they completely operate their business online. They are an online business, right? Their online appearance is similar to how an artist operates. They got the flashy graphics. They got the flashy logo. They, they, they operate just like any other online business. They are a brand, right? So, um, and they embrace a wider online audience. I mean, there, there are beat makers on BeatStars, producers on BeatStars that literally have half a million subscribers on YouTube. Do you know what you can do with a half a million subscribers on YouTube? <laughs> There's kids on BeatStars making $50,000 a month selling beats. And there's more than one of them. <laughs> we did half a million dollars in the last 30 days alone. And so it's just wide open. And I'm going to show you guys a few steps to just kickstart what you're doing. And with any small business, of course, you have to understand there's cost and there's, there's, a, there's an investment involved. You have to spend advertisement money, especially if you're just getting started out. 
you got to spend ad money. You have to acquire email subscribers. You have to nurture your audience. You have to be a great customer support agent. You have to be a great marketer. So there's a lot of things in, in, um, that you really need to understand prior to start starting to sell beats. You have to, at every seminar, I've been preaching this one thing. And I think it, was, it helped me um, be the bedroom entrepreneur, right, starting out, just like you guys are the bedroom producer, um, was go find someone in your close surroundings, a family member, a friend, someone in your close surroundings that has a successful business. Even if it's a brick and mortar business, you know, coffee shop, deli, I don't care what it is. If someone in your close surroundings has a successful business, I want you to go work there for free. Go work there for free and watch them how they operate and just be a helping hand across the way. Understand what it takes to create quality products. Understand what it takes to retain your customers. Understand what it takes to brand yourself. Understand everything that has to do with being an entrepreneur and you can apply all of those same tactics to your online business. So hopefully some of you have already kind of watched, I mean, since you're here, you're interested in being an entrepreneur, right? You're interested in starting a business. So you've already maybe have had that itch already, have been exposed to a business already. Just go back to those memory banks and pull out some of those very, very small details about what makes businesses successful. So, you know, you have to balance, you got to balance knowing how to commit time to making great music and then of course balancing marketing and being, being a salesperson. So um, another roadblock, oh wait, we didn't even get there yet. So, um, embrace, so, so the online beat maker embraces a wider, wider online audience of millions of millions of potential consumers. They adopt new music monetization models, right? They're not scared to earn revenue on their streams too. That's what's so beautiful about being a beat maker is that your, your beats can be consumed just like any other song. So you can have your beats available for stream on SoundCloud and on YouTube and on Daily Motion and on Audio Mac, all these guys that we have you know, um, deals with where you can earn on every single stream on your channel. And no one's, I mean, you, uh, as, I mean uh, no one's going to take that low quality MP3 stream that you have on those platforms and use it for like a real project. So what's cool is that you get to have a sampled version on these platforms with your tags and just have a low quality version where you're still enticing uh, the recording artist, the, the licensee of the beat to come back and purchase um, a download. And that's what's so beautiful about being a beat maker is that we're probably the last industry that will never be affected by the streaming world. You can't take a stream into the studio. You can't fucking rap on a stream. You know what I mean? You can't take a low quality like stream with a hundred tags in it. At the end of the day, recording artists need to have stems. They need to have high quality waves. They need to have the high quality files if they want to be taken serious, right? So the beauty about that is there's always going to be a transaction. It's not just going to be a stream, a stream to preview, but that transaction alone automatically signifies a premium on your content. So your beat will never be a fraction and fraction and fraction of a penny. It'll always be worth something more tangible because they got to license it. They got to download it. They got to consume it differently than the artist. That's a blessing. So, um, they adopt, so they adopt new music, um, monetization models. They, uh, detach themselves when it's, when it's time to be business owner and beat maker. You have to learn like some of the top selling beat makers on the site, some of the top selling producers on the site, once they're done with a the beat, they never listen to that shit ever again. That's a product now it's done, done making it. I move on. Now it's time to sell it. Right? So you have to learn to take that hat off of music maker and falling in love with your beat and shit. Move that in, move on to selling it. You are an online business. You have to learn how to juggle both worlds and not fall in love with your production. I'm not just, I'm not saying don't, you know, don't just put out crappy music. I'm saying, yeah, when you're in that mode of creating, make the best you can zone in. But once you're done, you're done. That is, that is just a product now. So you have, to, you have to learn, so you can't be sensitive. You can't be sensitive when you're, you know, if you get a bad comment on, 
beat stars about your beat or or a comment on YouTube about your beat. And you can't be sensitive. You're you're a business person now. You have to you have to reply to your your fan base just like any other business owner is and reply to them with love and respect. So some of the roadblocks is that, you know, there's millions of beat makers, millions of beat makers online striving for the same goals that you are. You know, there's a lot of noise. There's a lot of crappy beats. And so and there's a lot of beat makers that have kind of hacked the system, became popular, and may not be as talented as you. You might have the best beats in the world. If you don't, you don't know how to market and execute, no one's going to care. No one's going to know. So that's why I like to say, 90% online marketer, 10% musician. You're more of an online business person than a musician. You got to love generating revenue. You got to love striving for financial freedom. You got to love being your own business owner. You got to have a passion for it just as much as making beats or more. So you have to have these entrepreneurial ambitions. You can't just Wake up one day and say, I'm just going to make beats and I'm going to sell them. And yeah, I'm going to be a businessman. That's it. I'm just going to put my beats up. They'll sell, they'll sell. And if they don't sell, you know, you, you get heartbroken and, and you, you don't figure out why it didn't sell. With a brick and mortar business, a lot of, a lot of the coffee shop down the street has a built-in user base. People walking in and out, coming in and out, right? You, 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 can, you can sell them product. But when you're on the internet, you literally have to throw shit at people, like literally. To, to, you have to just do stuff that's so off the wall sometimes in, in marketing and, 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 in, and in the way you, you, you use your marketing tactics just to, cre just to break through all of the noise. And most of the time, it takes advertising. It takes money. And we're going to show you guys how to just hack your way into getting an audience right away. So some of the roadblocks, of course, making music and marketing, right? Just organizing your time. These phones are a gift and a curse. These phones can occupy so much of our time, so much production time, so much marketing time. Sometimes you got to know how to throw this shit away. Um, and who cares? Who cares if Kim Kardashian got locked up in a hotel room? Whatever, bro. Like I got to make money selling beats. Like get off that shit for real. All right. So another thing is keeping up with the ever changing digital music industry, right? It's always changing. It's always, there's always, there's always the freemium services. There's always the, the premium. There's always the, what's so beautiful is that you don't have to worry too much about that traditional music industry. All you have to worry about is the energy between the collaboration process between the artist and the producer. It's in our DNA to make music, whether there people are making money from it, this way or that way, it doesn't matter. There is this, this connection, this bond between producer and songwriter that you can never break and focus on those relationships, focus on that connection. Always learning. Um, so we run some of these, we run some of the biggest online remix contests and we'll do stuff with like uh, E40, um, the locks, you know, Cypress Hill exhibit, all, all kind of artists. And we'll, we'll run these remix contests. And the, the, the most beautiful thing that I, I noticed from these remix contests is um, some of the top remixes sound better than the original. And you can just tell that some producers exercise doing remix. They exercise like it's literally like a it's like, like, it's a this is like muscle memory. They're in there recreate. They're taking acapellas and adding new beats to those hit songs, right? They're they're remixing. They're breaking down current beats and remaking them. Like I feel like the guys that actually take the time in the beginning stages to remix, to recreate hit songs in the in in the past, in the present, figuring out why certain songs are resonating with an audience. I think those guys have you know, a head start in regards to wanting to sell online. Because when you're selling online, you got to remember, you're not, you're not cook. The pe people are not coming to your kitchen. Like I always, always reference the restaurant because online is a different, different world. You cannot compare making beats as a traditional music producer with a signature sound with the online beat maker. 
online beat makers have to watch the charts. They got to know what's hot on Billboard. They got to know what's hot on the BeatStars charts. They got to know what's hot on the Spotify charts. They got to create a sound that is in line with the current trends. That is the only way you're going to sell to a mass audience. You got to remember, you're selling beats to casual music listeners on the most part. And so the so so you have to understand that most of those people are listening to a lot of radio hits, stuff that's big on the radio um, across different genres. So you have to create music. Of course, you you want to add your own touches and, and ingredients to to your beats, but at the same time, if it is so far left that's what than what's on the radio, or so far right, you're not going to sell a beat initially. Like initially, initially you kind of have to give the audience pull the audience in pull the listener in with something that is familiar right you see guys like bruno mars do it all the time right they bring back sounds from back in the day that the sound like a hit record back in the 50s or 60s and they, they add their own flavor to it and it sounds amazing it still resonates just because it it was big in the 50s and 60s doesn't mean it's not going to resonate now we're all still human beings our ears still and brains still work the same we still resonate with good music so Going back into different eras, recreating some hits, finding out and understanding why certain music just resonates with people's ears, whether it's the tempos, the way the drums come in. I mean, just everything. Just, just break it down, especially when you're trying to sell to a mass audience, right? you got to sell. You have to f challenge yourself to create that perfect product that's going to appeal to a grand, grand audience.